Center is all about. And uh, but behind me right now is our docks, um, and you can see some of our rowers coming in from one of their practices this morning. Um, so coming in to dock, and then they'll put their boats away uh, in our boathouse. So one of the big things that we do uh, here in the city of Albany is uh, we actually uh, own the docks that you see. And the docks are available for use by residents of the city uh, to come down and use. Uh, so right now we have a lot of people that are coming out to fish and enjoy time on the Hudson River. So um, as they launch their boats at the public boat launch, they can also use our docks to get their boats situated and get out on the water. And we'll also see lots of people in kayaks and all kinds of other folks out um, getting to enjoy time out on the Hudson River. Okay, so uh, right now you can see uh, we have two boats that have just come in. Um, so one boat has four people in it. It's called a quad. Uh, the other boat just has one person in it, and that's called a single. And um, so when uh, they uh, get ready to bring the boats in, or when they get ready to take the boats out, um, they have to all coordinate with each other to, uh, to move the boat together. So uh, one of the steps for coming off the water is to take all of the um, oars uh, that they're using to row out of the oar locks, and then they'll put those to the side, and then uh, they'll be ready to pick up the boats and carry the boats back into our boathouse. So right here, uh, what you can see are a set of four rowers that are picking up a boat. So they all have to learn a lot about teamwork um, and how to carry the boat safely together with each other. So it takes a lot of uh, communication skills to be able to handle one of these boats as a team. 
Okay, so here we are back at our uh, boat shed, uh, which is run by the city of Albany. And in a minute, I will take you on a tour and show you around the boat shed. Uh, but before that, I want to talk to you a little bit about how we practice teamwork um, as rowers. So we row in um, boats of a range of different sizes. Um, some of our boats hold just one person. Um, other boats will hold up to eight people together. And when you have eight people together in a boat, um, all needing to work together to move the boat, um, you have to do a lot to make sure that everybody is coordinating with each other and so everyone's rowing at the same time and that so everyone agrees that you do the same thing with each other. So um, from the very beginning we teach a lot of teamwork skills right off the bat. And in a larger boat, like an eight-person boat, um, there's also always a ninth person that's present in the boat as well. Um, and they're a special person called the coxswain. And the coxswain's job is uh, to sit in the boat and to help steer. So um, rowing boats, actually, you face backwards um, while you are rowing. So if you're in the act of rowing, you can't see where you're going. So the coxswain in the back of the boat faces forwards so they can see where the boat is going and so they can help everybody coordinate. Okay, so now I'm going to take you on a tour of our boathouse. Um, one thing I will uh, note is we're actually located under a freeway overpass, so it's a little bit noisy. So hopefully you'll be able to hear me. But um, first what we'll do is we'll walk in this direction. And um, our boathouse is actually provided by the city of Albany. Um, so it's a space that we share with a couple of other programs as well. Um, but uh, it's a specialized shed that's a good storage facility for our rowing shelves. So over here we've got um, some storage racks that hold our oars. So you can see that uh, the oars that we use, they're very, very long. Yeah, I know. So they've got a, a blade on one end. And then um, this is the part that attaches to the boat. And then here's a handle that a rower will hold on to um, when they are rowing. So they're, they're very, very long. Um, so you learn a lot about how to handle uh, uh, long, awkward objects when you're Okay, so you might notice here that it looks like there's a bunch of markings um, on this oar. And um, what this is, is uh, this blue piece is what um, rests inside of an uh, oar lock on the boat. And um, so uh, the position of the blue piece along here uh, determines how much of the handle um, sticks out on the handle side versus how much sticks out on the blade side. And um, so you can think of this as being like a big lever. And so um, depending on where this blue uh, button is located, um, that changes the length of the lever. And so it's kind of like gearing on a bicycle. You can either make it a lighter, uh, a lighter gearing and uh, feel a lighter load, or you can make it a heavier gearing and feel a heavier load. Um, and so that's something that the rowers will change depending on the length of the race that they're doing um, and the conditions of the water outside. Okay, uh, now I'm going to show you some of the boats that are stored in our boathouse. Um, so if you look over here, uh, what you'll see are a bunch of very long skinny boats um, all stored in racks. And the boats that you see right here are uh, eight person boats. So each of these boats um, weighs around 200 pounds total. Um, and I don't know exactly how long they are, but they're very, very long. And um, they're only a little bit wider than at one person's hips are. So by itself, one of these boats um, will be very tippy. However, when you put oars in the boat, it's kind of like when a tightrope walker holds one of those long poles. Yeah. Um, that pole helps to stabilize the tightrope walker. And in the same way, when there are oars in one of these boats, the oars stick out on either side and they help to provide balance for the boat. But one thing that rowers learn to do um, when they're in the boat is um, how to practice holding their bodies and holding the oar to ensure that the boat stays nicely balanced. Okay, 
So in addition to the eight person boats that we have here, uh, we also have um, boats that are for uh, different numbers of people. So as one example, um, here's a single that's stored in a rack that hangs from the ceiling. So uh, this rack can be lowered down um, so the person can bring their boat out uh, to practice in the one person boat. And then um, on top of that, we also have boats that hold two people or four people. Um, so over here is um, a boat that holds just two people. And this is a boat that we call a pair because in this case, each person in the boat just has a single oar, and so you can imagine you can't row with just one oar with just one person. Um, so it takes two people um, coordinating with each other to, uh, to row in a pair. So these are one of the more challenging boats to learn how to row. Okay, so you might be wondering, um, you can see that there's the, the body of the boat here, and then there's this metal piece that's attached to the side of the boat. Um, and we call these metal pieces um, the rigger, and the rigger holds the oar lock, and the oar lock is the piece that actually contains the oar. So um, what these do is they move the oar lock so that it's further out uh, from the side of the boat uh, to help give you better leverage when you're rowing. And then um, in addition to that, uh, there are differences between the forward portion of the boat and the back portion of the boat. So we call the front of any boat is the bow. And then the back of the boat um, is called the stern. And you'll also notice um, that these boats have a fin on the bottom. Um, and the fin helps to keep the boat going straight forward. And so the fin's located towards the stern of the back of the boat. The show you are watching has been produced by SACC.TV. SAC TV is a not-for-profit organization that provides educational programming, seeking to enrich communities by producing shows on culture, science, health, the arts, and more. SAC TV is member-driven, which means that we rely on donations, grants, underwriting, and volunteers to deliver quality content. SAC.TV has been in operation continually since 1974 and currently operates a full-time studio in Rotterdam, New York. In recent years, SAC.TV has produced over 500 community-driven programs that are all available to view free to the public on www.sac.tv, on demand 24 hours a day. SAC.TV also airs shows on local television, channels such as WNYT, My 4 Albany, with programs like Do You Know the Muffin Man, Caught in the Crossfire, Scene TV, Tune in to Wellness Today, and The Janice Thompson Show. Check your local programming schedule or www.sac.tv for times and dates. In SAC.TV's mission to connect and inform communities and individuals, every week we're producing new shows. To be able to provide this service, we are in need of your help. There's a lot of ways you can help SAC.TV and in turn, help your community. Visit www.sac.tv. There you can click on Donate and select the contribution level of your choice. You can also help SAC.TV by sponsoring an ongoing program, volunteering behind the scenes, or even producing your own show. And as always, if you enjoy what you've seen, visit us on YouTube and Facebook. Subscribe, like, share, and pass the word around. For more information and to see the latest shows, visit www.sac.tv or contact us as director at sac.tv or by phone at 518-831-9145.
For now, back to our program and stay tuned for more great shows. And Yuri is our head coach here. So um, he has a tremendous amount of experience with the sport of rowing. Um, and he teaches all of us, he teaches me as well, um, how to uh, engage in rowing correctly. Um, so uh, we, you can really learn the, t the basics for rowing in about five minutes, but then it can take the rest of your life to master all of the details. Um, it's kind of like uh, learning very intricate ballet or gymnastics moves um, where there are a lot of uh, pieces to choreograph together. All right. So execution is the key with all the technical, physical, and mental demands we can achieve the best. Yeah. All right. In general. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, and now uh, we want to show you um, inside of one of our rowing boats uh, so you can get an idea of how these boats work. Um, so, uh, right here we have another example of a single. And um, so you'll notice this, so now this boat is sitting face up and the bow of the boat is up uh, that way. So there it is. And then the stern of the boat is down at the other end. And you'll notice inside of this boat, uh, we've actually got a seat here. Um, and this seat is on, it has wheels and it's on a set of tracks. So the seat actually rolls back and forth. So when you're sitting in the boat, um, you're not just using your arms and your back, you can actually use your whole body uh, to move uh, the boat forward. And in addition to the seat, we've also got um, a set of shoes here. Uh, so you put your feet inside of these shoes. And the boats are very thin, so they're made of carbon fiber. And so we also always tell everyone, when you're stepping in the boat, there's a special reinforced place in the middle, um, and that's the only place that you're supposed to step inside of the boat, just to make sure that your foot doesn't go straight through the boat. So here's an example of a rowing machine, and these are really useful. We use these as part of our training. Um, it's very much like sitting on an indoor bike, so it's not as much fun as being out on the water is, but in the middle of winter, um, it's really useful for, for gaining fitness. Um, and so just as with the boat, um, there's a place to put your feet. And then there's a, a seat that's on wheels, so it slides back and forth. And when we teach new people how to row, we usually start out on the rowing machine because it's a good way to practice the movement of rowing. And so in this case, instead of having an oar, um, I have a handle that acts like the oar. And um, so the, the rowing motion is a full body motion. Um, so it uses your arms, your back, and your legs. And um, that's part of why when you're in a rowing boat, you face backwards because you get better leverage using um, as many muscle groups in your body as possible. So the rowing stroke, um, it's, like, it's like learning a new dance move. Um, it's a smooth, coordinated motion. And it consists of first coming up to take a rowing stroke. So you first straighten your arms and then bring your back forward. And then uh, you compress your legs. And then to actually move the boat, um, this is where if you're on the water, you put the oar in the water. And then first you use your legs and then you use your back and then you use your arms. So it's a full body motion. So arms, back, legs, legs, back, arms. And ideally you want it to be a smooth, continuous movement. And um, so with practice, once you get that coordination down, um, then you start to find a rhythm. And the goal is to hold a rhythm. And so by, by structuring the boat in this fashion, this is what we figured out as the fastest way uh, to get a boat moving through the water. So it's a little different from something like kayaking where you're facing forward, but in a kayak, 
you don't have the advantage of getting to use your legs. And so really, it's your legs that do most of the work when you're in a rowing shell. So a lot of people might wonder, so is the purpose of rowing, you know, just going out to try and win on, you know, if I'm not someone who's, you know, built to be an Olympic athlete, should I even bother? Why should I get into this sport? And there are a lot of answers to that question and Reen has some perspective to offer. I started rowing because I wanted to learn a new sport, not because I had any thought about competing. The competition came later because I was already competing and running 10Ks, but the competition came later as I started finding I was actually learning how to row pretty well, but I loved being on the water so much. So for me it was, um, I started off learning how to row, but then I, I, I got into competition and I loved it, absolutely loved it. And I'm not one of those big Olympic athletes, you know, and I still could compete. I have seven gold medals from the Canadian Royal Canadian Henley up in St. Catharines, which is pretty good. I have so many trophies, I've gotten so many medals through the years, my dad actually made a trophy case for me. Now I'm at the point where I want to compete. I love my fall races, which are two and a half to three miles long. But I really enjoy just going out and keeping in just a great shape and great form. And so I'm not out to really compete right now, like during the sprint race season. I just want to be out rowing. I want to be out rowing with my teammates. I want to enjoy their com camaraderie. I just want to be in a boat. I want to be in the water. I want to start my day by rowing in the morning. I have no interest in going up, and never did, of going up to the Olympics. It's, it never, that was never even a thought. I was just happy to get done what I did. But to me, it's something I will do for the rest of my life. Um, I just can't, I, I don't know what else to say except that it's the best thing I ever did. And it's psychologically and emotionally, it's been so uplifting. The Albany Rowing Center is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, so we're, what that means is, you know, we're here as an organization to serve the public um, and to promote the sport of rowing to and bring it to as many people as possible. But along with that, what that means is that we are a volunteer-run organization. Um, and uh, as I've mentioned, and I think as you've gotten to see, um, a lot of our equipment is very specialized, and um, it get, gets used by a lot of different people over the course of the day. Um, and so as a result of that, um, since one of our missions is to make rowing accessible to people, uh, one of the things that we have to do as a program is continually work to um, develop and keep up and uh, build up our, our rowing equipment. Um, so at the moment we're um, on the verge of getting ready to uh, work on a round of fundraising um, to uh, help and uh, get resources together to purchase some more boats to support our programs. And as an example, um, right now I'm standing next to a two-person boat, um, so the pair that we looked at earlier. And one of these boats can cost somewhere around about $15,000. So they're very expensive, specialized pieces of equipment. And um, a given boat on a particular day could have as many as three or four different people that sit in the seat that get to use the boat. Um, and oftentimes uh, when we're out on the river or sometimes when we take our boats to travel, um, on the river we might encounter a log. Um, when traveling there are other hazards. So our equipment takes a lot of abuse um, from its just day-to-day -day use. Um, so with our fundraising efforts, what we want to do is try to bring together as much resources as we can um, so that we can continue to provide rowing equipment to as many people as possible. One thing that we would like to do is to continue to build up uh, water-based activities along the riverfront um, in Albany. Um, so at the time, at this time, we are in a boat shed that's located under the freeway. Um, but one thing that we would really love to do is to continue growing water sports in Albany um, and to make even more water sports accessible to other people. Um, so uh, we want to keep working with the city of Albany and with other uh, waterfront stakeholders um, to develop more opportunities uh, to get people out on the water. 
Uh, as one example of that, um, the doc that we provide and we make accessible to everybody um, every year experiences a lot of wear and tear. Um, so we also uh, do a lot of grant writing and fundraising um, to uh, get replacement pieces for our dock um, so that it's available to other people as well. Um, so although um, we're a small organization, I think we have a big mission. Um, there's a lot that we could accomplish um, and, and in all of that we're very dependent on volunteers, myself included, um, to help keep all of our programs going. Okay, now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how you can get in touch with us. Um, so we have a website, we're at albanyrowingcenter.org, and if you want to get in touch with us directly, um, you can email us just at info at albanyrowingcenter.org. Uh, those are usually the best ways to get in touch. We're also down here at our boathouse uh, very frequently on weekdays and also on Saturdays. Um, so sometimes it's possible to just stop by and say hello in person. So the thing about rowing is that we recognize that everyone has a contribution to make. And that contribution is different for different people. And so what we want to do is get everyone into a place where they can make the right kind of contribution because that's how we create you know, a better community within our sports and it's how we create a better society in general. That's all there is to it. Well, welcome back. I'm still trying to bake the muffins. But finally, finally, I think we're finished. I hope you enjoyed our show today. If you would like to make an order or donate muffins to charity, then please go to the website listed below. With every muffin order, we donate muffins to the charity of your choice. <laughs> I call it giving your dough to charity. I also encourage you to donate directly to the featured charity today by going directly to our website and getting their information. Thank you very much for watching and keep on dancing through life by giving to others through love. Let me finish baking these muffins and see you next time. <laughs>